OpenAI just launched Sora 2, an AI video model where you can insert your face and your voice into the model or into scenes. But what does that do with your identity, copyright, and the way you're perceived online? Let's unpack it. Sora 2 is OpenAI's next gen AI model that allows you to use your face and your video plus audio generation model. Now bundled with a standalone Sora app and it's a beast. Here are the key upgrades, synchronized dialogue, sound effects, improved physics, and this is where the real money maker is. It allows you to have realism there, better control over animations and a cameo feature which allows you or verified users, remember that, to be inserted into AI created scenes. The app is TikTok style, vertical video feed, remixing, sharing, and for you, an algorithmic feed. This is their wow factor. They want you to imagine flying in the sky in the fantasy land, creating a video of yourself dancing in a fantasy world just by typing a prompt. The cameo feature is a big, huge leap in personalization, but it does come with some risks. There's the unauthorized users, and then there's the deep fakes. Even though identity verification is built in, there are concerns about fake realness or fake likeness or impersonation. Within hours of its release, you guessed that users reported uses of AI generated hate speech and violence, graphic materials, or unauthorized uses of copyrighted images. One way that OpenAI is trying to get around this is they say that there is a visible watermark at the bottom of it. OpenAI started off with the opt-in or opt-out for IP holders. So basically, OpenAI said that if you are an IP holder, you can opt out or request exclusion. But Backlash has prompted Sam Altman and OpenAI to propose more more control, opt-in mechanisms, and revenue sharing for right holders. I know, I know, I've been listening to your feedback, great story and all, but what does it mean to you? For creators and influencers, your image is now content. Anyone, anyone could conceivably generate videos of you if your permissions are weak. Establishing rights, brand control, and clear identity verification are essential. For rights holders and IP holders, this means that you have to prove that your product, this means that you have the burden to prove rights infringement. For example, if Disney has some characters characters on Sword 2 that are being used without their permission, they have to find every instance of every use and they have to be able to prove that it's theirs. Crazy, right? For everyone else, like the everyday users, now you have to really trust what you see or not. What's real may be synthetic and your likeness has value. How do you want it to be used? This is definitely a use case for how legal systems and courts and platforms will handle generative AI videos, likeness and platform moderation. This brings up the question, will rights holders reject or collaborate? Will we see legal precedents in generative AI videos and likeness misuse? And can AI platforms build guardrails that'll scale? Let me know what you think. And next week, I'll dig into takedown policies and lawsuits. I'm Nate So AI. This is Ray Clout, Real AI, Real Talk.